Yes, good morning, Kelowna. It's a beautiful fall day, and here we are in October. All of a sudden, we're October. And, yes. Uh, Ken, mm-hmm. it's, uh, the year has gone by very quickly. Uh, and mm. uh, But, hey, we're into the what we say is the nicest time of the year. Oh, and it's I'm going to talk about yeah. the difference. Fresh air. I know. Oh, I know. Okay. It's beautiful. Okay. Well, let's do the tips and plants of the week, then we'll get into that discussion. <laughs> Okie doke. Well, my, my tip of the week is this, that um, if you are, uh, uh, if you have pots and planters and things like that, that you've taken out of the, out of the, uh, taking the soil out and you're stashing away for, for winter, make sure you clean them before you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of t- folks will just throw them in a pile out back and not clean them up. Um, I think there's something to be said, especially especially if if they get a little wet outside over the winter, mm. uh, the bugs and uh, the disease and stuff can can uh, you know get worse. And and you want to clean them up. A little bit of a ten percent bleach solution. That was a long tip of the week, but I'll make it shorter at the end of the show. Uh, my plant of the week is lithops, and I'm so excited. Get yeah, my lithops keep blooming, and they That's keep blooming from the same spot. I. I I've got to talk to you about that as well. There's so much to talk about today. That's my tips and plants of the week. All righty. I also have a tip and a plant. And my tip of the week is that during the winter months when the days get a little bit bit shorter, you definitely want to back off on the watering on your house plants. So let them dry out a bit more than you normally would through the winter. Move them closer to the windows. And don't be afraid to just let them get a bit drier. It's one of the things. The roots have to breathe and they're not doing much in the winter. So... Might as well dry them out a bit. All right, now my plant of the week this week is the red maple, which is the Acer rubrum, and uh, they're just starting to turn red already here. It's just a, a fabulous time of year for those red maples. Interesting thing with Acer rubrum is that it uh, it's green all season, and it only turns red in the fall, and they call it the red maple. So there you go. It's just one of those things. Acer, that's the maple family, and rubrum, it's red. There you go, Acer Rubrum. That's my plant of the week this week. Remember to check growercoach.com. Well, Ken, uh, great. My my uh, plant of the week this week, this lithops, that's the uh, the, the living rocks. The living you know, the little, stones. Those living stones, right? Yeah, They cool look like plant. stones, and they're native to South Africa. They mm-hmm. actually belong to the ice plant family, the Aziaceae Asia, Asia, Asia mm-hmm. family, and... Um, so it's a large family, large collection of 183 gen, genera, genus, mm. uh, genuses, genera, and and they're all native to South America. So the ice plant family is all native mm. to South America or uh, to South Southern Africa. Mm. Now the reason I brought this in because last night, like about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think I sent you a picture of it, blue, yeah. a little yellow daisy flower. And I thought, oh, it's blue. And the next day, that daisy flower had withered and done. It was done. So I thought, oh, okay, it's just one one shot deal. And a lot of the plants, like your orchid that mm-hmm. I, that you gave me, uh, is a one shot thing, one one day. Yeah, blue. the orchid cactus. Yeah, orchid cactus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this thing had withered, and then uh, lo and behold, about three or four days later, the bloom came back in the same place, same spot. Mm-hmm. And then I, I brought it in the greenhouse, and then a few days later, two blooms came up. <laughs> and they, they withered. Well, last night I went out there, and the two blooms were back again. Huh. So I, I don't know. It's I, I'm sure that's normal for them. But I've never had a lithops before. Yeah, it's, it's a very uh, unique uh, plant for is, sure. Something very, unusual. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I like and it. You, you know, you you've always said to me the way you can tell. The relationships between plants is their bloom. Yes. Their bloom form and shape. Yep. Well, look at this. It's an ice plant bloom. Yeah, they do. They look just like it's ice like plant. It's like an ice yeah. plant bloom, you know? Yeah, you so there you go. It's just Delosperma. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah, there's a lot of different types of ice plants, too. I mean, it is a big family. It's it's very cool. And succulents, uh, it's, it's one of those succulent groups, but I think it's got to be one of the most unusual plants Really, on the planet. It's right. just a weird thing. It's like a little blob. Yeah. But yet, it's a plant. And mine are growing like crazy. I've got a, a dish. It's, hopefully, I'm going to have a dish full of them, just full yeah. of lithops. Wow, wouldn't that be cool? I think so. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I, I carved Ellie, my granddaughter's name, and another little gal's name in my squash. Right. Turned out great. And they love it. The kids just, oh, well, my name's in a squash. It was very, because cause it grows <laughs> and then it's, it's, it forms a callus. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. So Did you, uh, you got some pictures of that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ooh, very cool. I have pictures of that. And Send me some pictures. I will. I will. It was kind of fun to do. Today is 11 hours and 28 minutes long. Oh. 11 hours and 28 minutes long. It's gone less than, yeah. less than 12 less hours. Less than 12. It's five hours and two minutes shorter mm-hmm. than the longest day on June 21st. Mm-hmm. Five hours and two minutes shorter than it was back then. And you can tell. You can tell. Mm-hmm. Ken, and I was thinking about this yesterday. A deep thought out in my backyard. I was working on some... I'm, I'm sanding some wood out there, and I just, deep, deep thought. Why is it a different feeling in the fall when really the days are shortening and lengthening the same way as they do in the spring, only they're getting longer in the spring, but you, it smell, you can smell it in the air, the fall. Mm-hmm. And I realize what it is is in the spring, we were cold, and it's getting warmer. Mm-hmm. And so it feels... A different feel of the change. Now it was hot, and the days are hot too. Mm-hmm. And then it cools off in the evening. It just feels different. It's fall. Mm-hmm. It's fall. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the uh, it's, 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 it has a lot to do with the microbiology of of what's going on around us. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it, it's you know this time of year. I'm sure there's a, a, a much higher uh, prevalence of, of fungus yeah. in the air, well, <laughs> just because it is. Yeah. It's that time of year. Things are starting to decompose, I guess. I don't, no, it's interesting. But, uh, yeah, like you say, it's it's just the, the days are cooling off. It's it's lovely. I, I, I really enjoy it. So, like, if you were fast asleep, say you were in a mm-hmm. coma. I wish that on mm-hmm. no one. I sure was, don't wish it on you. But say you were in a coma for two okay. years. Okay? <laughs> just pretend. <laughs> okay. And you woke up yep. in the springtime. Mm-hmm. And nobody told you. You didn't have a calendar. You didn't know what it was. You just woke up, and you walked out in the springtime. There was no snow on the ground. It was spring. Say, say I'm thinking maybe the mm-hmm. 20th of April. Yep. Okay? Nights are cool. The 20th are of March. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you w- you wake up. You walk outside, and you don't open your eyes because, of course, you know, trees and everything. So let's say right away. you're talking no leaves. Are you talking leaves on the trees? No leaves. No leaves. Because March, you can't, end of March, you can't. you've got no leaves I, really at okay. all. Okay, I know. But but still, if you walked outside and closed your eyes and just kind of smelt the air. Mm-hmm. Or if you were in a coma, could you say, oh, it's it's spring. Or if you woke up in mid-March, uh, in mid-April, or mid, mid-October. Right. I think for sure, in spring, you'd be confused. You're, I'm not sure. Not sure what time of year it is, but if you woke up in mid-October, you'd know it's fall. You say, it's fall. I don't know. Yeah, well, you I know, think... my sense of smell is nowhere near what it used to be. <laughs> anyway, I just I, I was in yeah. deep thought. You know when you're sanding boards and it's just all repetitive, mm-hmm. oh, do 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 you think about these things, right? I guess. And the one thing that you notice is that, hmm, it's dark already. <laughs> <laughs> or I get it. My alarm clock goes up, get, goes off in the morning, oh, yeah. and I get up, and it's like, oh my god, it's like stone cold black, dark nighttime. This morning it was nearly a full moon. This morning, which was pretty interesting, uh, but still, it was pretty. Uh, it's pretty dark at. at it is five quite dark. In the morning, oh yeah, it's yeah. quite dark. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, when I came out this morning at about six thirty in the morning, walked out the backyard just to do my walkabout and look at the plants and water things that need watering whatnot the dew yeah is really i don't think we get this kind of dew in the springtime yeah it's, that is a bit of a mystery for sure not a mystery but i mean yeah. whether the well, difference because is it's so hot in the daytime and then all yeah. of a sudden it cools down at night the dew condenses yeah the and water then condenses. you get the frost and now you got dewy frost or frosty yeah. dew yeah <laughs> this is a deep Deep oh, show today. I think we better open the lines. 
Yeah. 250. <laughs> Save us. Brenda's going, yes, please do. 250 862 2525 to get through to Ken and I. We're here mm. talking gardening and we're inviting your calls. We're easy to talk to. It's like talking over the back fence to, you know, chatting, gardening talk. And you're welcome to call us at that number when we come back with more AM 1150 Gardening. <laughs> back um beautiful day if the if we didn't have uh, the misty cloudy uh, smoke uh, maybe the i don't know it would be a clear day that's just fog uh, that's what is it, it is. fog it's fog it's fog yeah yeah well mm-hmm. there you go and a bit of a foggy start to the day yeah but it was, it was beautiful clear and like i say uh, i thought it was a full moon this morning because it was the the moon light was brighter than our street light if you can imagine that wow it was beautiful but it wasn't quite full moon i think it was like Ninety well, percent full. I, we're having a foggy morning. Mm-hmm. The other day, I sent you pictures. I was having a figgy morning. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, your figs, figs are figs on my coming on like crazy. Well, we had some pretty nice weather there in September. I, I just think of last year, and it was very uh, rainy, and it wasn't really that nice, you know. And this and year, it froze it's been last warm. year on the thirteenth of October. Yes. Anyway, uh, enough said about that. We don't want to talk about that word, the frost word, or the S word, the snow word. Uh, Ken, good morning. You're on the air with us. Good, good morning, Ken. Morning. Hello, uh, Ken. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, wonderful. So I have two questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in uh, late spring, I uh, planted a, what do they call it, dogwood, maple, uh, dogwood tree and a maple, uh, Japanese maple bush. Mm-hmm. And they said I got to water them every day. So I've been doing that. I don't know how far into the what you know, do I how long do I have to do that every day before, you know, I don't have to. Um, cause, uh, that was I guess to get them set, established and get the roots going and all that kind of stuff. How long do I have to do that for? Well, you know, Ken, watering every day uh on a new plant, unless it's really, really, really hot and a lot of you know, like in August I would say every day wouldn't hurt, but You really don't have to water every day. When you do water, though, you want to water it really well. Get a good soaking right down. You make sure that you're getting that water right at the root ball because the roots haven't spread out yet and getting ambient moisture. So this is what somebody's wanting you to do. I mean, one one of the reasons why plants don't make it is because they don't get watered enough. But that's probably not the biggest reason. Um are you having trouble with the plant? First of all, how are they looking? No, no, no. Just, They're looking just good. Going into the fall, and there you thinking, go. You know, do I? Yeah, you can back off. You day. can you can back off. Uh, yeah, seriously, back off. Um, at this time yeah. of year, once uh, a week is yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now the second question mm-hmm. is that you know I, I have these lovely deer who love to trample through my property and love to eat everything around it, and they started eating the dogwood right away when I put it in there, mm-hmm. and so I ended up putting some uh, mesh around it, a big circle thing around the the tree and um, up to the top so they couldn't eat all the leaves, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I was I I was worried that. Will the tree not want to grow because it's been surrounded by this mash? I haven't. It's not touching the tree. I'm just wondering if it senses that it's not there, so it won't grow any bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah, it definitely. I'm sure that they can tell that the fence is there because I'm always amazed at what plants uh, can detect. But yeah, um, yeah. but I, I don't think I think it's well worth the protection at least while they're young. You know, and as yeah. they get older, it, it you know the deer. It's not the the deer's number one food supply, but they right. do consume dogwoods. It's it's uh, it's it's one of the the plants that they they do eat. Um, <laughs> so there isn't really too much you can do. But you're already doing what you can do, which is putting a little bit of fencing around it. And you're going to find yeah. there's certain times of the year when it's worse, when when they they're worse of a problem, and it's typically fall through spring and and not often not as bad in the summertime. But we just have to watch, uh, depending where you live, you know, they they might come around. But as it gets bigger, it's sort of, they're, they're, they're much better off as they get bigger. So you got a few years, you have to battle with the deer, and then they should be all right. Well, that's why that's my other question. Is there a particular time of year that I don't have to worry about the meeting as much? But you're saying 
from what I understand, that from now till the spring is when they probably want to eat it more. Yeah, and especially they might start rasping right now that's because was, that's, that's a, one of the deer, uh, I would say one of our tips could be or should be at this time of year is to uh, make sure you do add some deer protection to things that you want to save, uh, partially from eating, but often from rasping of the antlers because they're trying to clear the, the velvet from their, their, their antlers. So they, they're looking for small trees to attack, uh, to just right. get that, that velvet off. So yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, but that you've already done what you what you should do, which is put that fencing up and just keep it, you know, keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't get knocked over and you should be all right. Wonderful. I appreciate it. Thanks, Alan. Well, yep. thanks for the call. Yeah, Ken. thanks for thanks calling. For yeah, you too. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. Now, Kim, yeah. uh, this mm-hmm. guy, you got two heads. It's difficult for me uh, mm-hmm. when you're talking to two Kens. It's very tough on me. But anyway, we got one <laughs> Ken left here, and that's who I'm talking to. Um, what, what is your, yeah, what is your, uh, what is your uh, opinion? Mm-hmm. Because I was at a place the other day uh, where they had cut, split down some big old and put it on the thing for deer protection. Mm-hmm. But when I lifted it up, there was earwigs. It was damp. It was not good inside. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, we've done that before. Uh, you know, it's on. It's for a young tree is what it's for. So when the trees are small, it definitely does help. Um, and it's, it's better than nothing. Right. And actually even just strapping one piece at about, you know, the nose height where, where the deer's nose would be is adequate because the, the deer, they, 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 they get confused by that. That's right where they want to rasp with their antlers. And it definitely confuses them. So it does work. Uh, the problems I've had with Big O is that it's so tight that it's very hard to get on without damaging the bark. Right. And if it ever slips down and touches the ground, well, that's where the mice get in. And the mice will live inside that Big O and eat all the bark off the tree if it's a type of tree that they want to eat. Just and when I've, you think yeah, you got it beaten. Yeah. I know. If it's yeah. not the deer, it's the mice. So. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. I like to keep them suspended off the ground, so we always used to tie them on the tree. So we'd we'd drill a little hole at the top of the big okay. O. Yeah. We'd so string just, it yeah. and we'd hang it so it was around the trunk, Makes but yet sense. hanging from the bottom branch, keeping it up off the ground a bit. Makes sense. Yeah. Two five zero eight six two two five two five to get through to Ken and I today. We're having a good time. It's fall and uh, fall bulb time, Ken. We haven't even talked about fall bulbs I yet. Know. It's a perfect time of the year mm-hmm. to get those uh, tulips, daffodils, narcissus, crocus, and alliums, and uh, all the little uh, uh, tiny bulbs that you can buy. Uh, the wood um, wood anemones and things like that. You can buy those now in the stores and uh, buying them out, putting them in the ground. You know, you're just now tidying up your annuals and getting rid of your alyssum and things like that, uh, the lobelia that's all in the ground, I'm trying to t- clean those beds up. Mm-hmm. Now's the time to put some bulbs in. And I just I just love putting bulbs in because uh, it's a surprise in the spring sometimes. Yeah, it's um, an investment in your spring it is. color. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a surprise that they don't come up. <laughs> I've had it. Yeah. Sometimes. The interesting thing, I put I planted some anem- anemones, uh, mm-hmm. just regular uh, Bridget uh, anemones and blue ones, you know, and that. Planted them two falls ago, not last fall, but the fall before. And nothing came up in the spring. They There was nothing in that. In, do you know that this year in April, up comes the anemones? Mm-hmm. Why? I'm asking you, Ken. Why? It's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way we answer a lot of these questions. It's a mystery. It's a mystery yeah, because yeah. Uh, it, it's just fascinating, though. It's it's more mm-hmm. of a fascination to me than a mystery because mm-hmm. you don't question nature. I mean, it's does it has its ways. It, yeah. So, so it's just we just don't know. <laughs> We're an agnostic well, garden. <laughs> every every single situation is unique, that's for sure. And um there's a lot of things that can affect them. You know, and I was thinking about that, you know, that the the pocket gophers that we have here are notorious for getting our bulbs and you know, there's a lot of properties that have pocket gophers and people often call them uh moles, you know. They'll say, Oh, I got these little mounds that show up here and there. It's like, well, there's no moles in the Okanagan. There's only pocket gophers and they cause those little mounds. And what what do they do? Well they eat plants that are underground. They eat the roots of plants. 
and what's their you know one of their favorites is bulbs. Uh, I don't think they do the narcissus family, so the daffodils, but they will uh, attack tulips and other types of plants. And you'll often see them when you see bulbs or even sometimes potatoes dug up and they're all chewed off on one side. You know that uh, really? there's been a pocket gopher in there having a snack and it's not, not a nice thing. It's just the way it goes. So, yeah, you can plant bulbs and sometimes they don't come up and that's that's one of the reasons. I remember, uh, we're going to go to the phone lines real quick here because we've got a caller waiting for us. And in, fa- in fact, we should do that because we're going to have to take a break soon, too. Brenda, good morning. How are you this morning? I'm well. How are you? We're well, good, thank thanks. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good, good. Um, I have two hibiscus shrubs, uh, west-facing, and I'm just guessing that one has been underwatered. What has happened is it's just, it's got a very few green leaves in the center, but basically just gone brown. Oh, it started two or three weeks ago already. Mm. Is this a new plant, Brenda, or established? No, I think they are three or four years old. And they haven't done this before? No. The, <laughs> actually, it's only the one. The one is quite healthy and okay. happy. Yeah, what's uh, going on with those, Ken? I've seen a couple of those around town. That's a, a, This is the Rose of Sharon type hibiscus, is it? The hibiscus so. syriacus? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, they're prone to a couple of diseases that uh, that show up from time to time. And often on larger plants, uh, you can lose the majority of the plant. Like it can it can die back. My own, I, I have about four different hibiscus, and one of them uh, really died back hard. Uh, so there's a combination of things, um, but uh, I just hope it's not going to spread to the other plant. Now, if it is a disease, uh, what I do is I just just inspect that plant up close. If you'd like to take a picture of it and send it to either Don or myself, you know, we'd be glad to look at that for you. But uh, scratching the bark with your thumbnail, checking to see what's what's going on under the bark. Uh, A lot of times these things will start to die back and the wood just goes brown and it becomes dry. And then, you know, it's kind of it could be on its way out. But mine, uh, I had uh, one of one of mine, uh, my white uh, Diana, it died down uh, to about uh, one foot high and I had to cut out all the dead wood, cut it right down. And the whole thing came right back up again. It came up to about three feet high and then it bloomed and it was perfectly healthy all summer. So I'm kind of hoping that it'll outgrow that problem. So, so that might be something that might happen with yours is that the top might die back, die back, die back. You cut it off and there's still some life at the bottom. And then next year, the thing grows right back to full size again. Mm-hmm. So that would be, I think, our best uh, best case scenario. And I think a good good uh, cultural practice is when you do that too, Brenda. You want to make sure that you don't go trimming with your saw or your shears on that plant and then go and do the other plant and uh, pass any Spread pot pathogen it. along. You want to keep things clean. Mm-hmm. Oh, very good. Um, so on the one that is healthy, mm-hmm. should I be cutting that back not necessarily. Uh, if it's planted in an area where it's just getting too, too, too large, they are prunable. But other than that, uh, you know, I, I don't No, uh, I wouldn't be cutting on that at all if I didn't have to. Yeah. Uh, the one nice thing with Rows of Sharon is that if you never touch them, they grow into this beautiful sort of teardrop shape mm-hmm. where they're slightly taller than they are wide. And they're just a, a lovely shape. And to me, that's that's what a hibiscus looks like or a rose of Sharon. should always be this nice teardrop shape, taller than wide mm-hmm. and lovely. Now, as soon as we start hacking at that and altering that shape, well, you never know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. So I'm, okay. I'm more inclined to just let it do its thing and not touch it too much. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much. All righty. Thanks Brent. for calling in. Brenda, yes, thank, thank you so you. much for calling in and thanks for the, your contribution today. Yeah. We're going to take a short break here and Mm -hmm. invite your calls, 250-862-2525 to get through to us. We'll be back with more in 1150 Garden. You bet. We're back, and uh, fall is in the air. It is a beautiful time of the year, and um, last year, as I was saying, it froze on October the 13th. Yeah, and it froze really good. Yeah, it, it was a good frost. It wasn't it was just a like a tiddlywink frost. It nope. was like solid. My banana was laying flat. Um, yeah. Everything. It actually, uh, and in areas, surrounding areas, it was beyond minus 10 in that period. 
because we that was when I was telling you about how the, oh, the uh, sprinkler blowouts, sprinklers yeah. that were yeah because we were in the middle of blowouts and we couldn't do blowouts for a couple of days <laughs> it was too cold and uh, lots of systems were damaged like uh, where where they were left where there was water in the system and anything that was above ground just seemed to snap off break mm-hmm. off the uh, double check valves you know there was quite a few of those that were damaged mm-hmm. and they're you know they're they're brass and they just can't stand that freezing so. Yeah, it was a tough one. It was expensive, let's say. Well, yeah, it, very expensive. It mm-hmm. was expensive for me to park last week, too, because uh, I didn't park in our designated mm. parking in the back, and I parked out front on Bernard Avenue. Yep. Came out, and I had a ticket. I had a parking yeah. ticket. I got a parking ticket. Mm. But if you pay it early, it's cheap. Mm. No problem. 20 bucks, I think. Mm. 20 bucks but you know uh you you got to have that system is the only yep. the only problem is if if i was parking out front of the station on bernard mm-hmm. i get here at quarter to eight yeah if i put two hours worth in there it runs out at quarter to ten mm-hmm. and the parking thing well they know you see it says it's got your name on the side of the of your vehicle yeah so then all they have to do is look and they go oh he's on the garden show right now well, you'd think. So uh, I'll just come back at, you'd think. Uh, you know, you'd think. 10 to. Got him. Bam. I know. Did they get a commission? I don't know. I don't know, Ken. Mm. Uh, this is not politically correct to be no. talking about this, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, it's just parking tickets, parking tickets, yeah. parking Yeah, that's the way it goes. Like, I know, you know, what we've been doing this show for a long time, mm-hmm. and we've had thousands of dollars in parking tickets, I'm sure, over the last, uh, whatever, 20 years or so, 30 years, yeah, 40 years, mm. whatever it's been. Anyway... 250-862-2525 to get through to us today. Um, so you're doing your blowouts now? You're, that you're on oh, yeah. schedule? It's now? October 1st. You have to hit it hard. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to go, um, you know, we don't have as many as, uh, as some companies do. Mm-hmm. But uh, unfortunately, a few years ago, we had to, we, we had so many, like I think uh, we had over almost 350 to 400, mm-hmm. somewhere in that range. And so it was. It's difficult for a, uh, a company to be able to do all those. Like mm-hmm. unless if you're an in, independent and you're going seven days a week and doing twelve, fourteen hour days or whatever, you can, um, you can get a lot done. But when you're running a normal eight hour day and you're, you know, you're taking weekends and holidays off and that sort of thing, and you know, mm-hmm. it's it's hard to fit them all in the month of October. So now we're down to I think about a hundred and some hundred and thirty or so. I remember in my day, mm. Ken, I had about forty five, and I did them all myself. I yeah. went out and did them all myself. This is back in the seventies, right? And uh, maybe early eighties, and I, I did them all myself. And uh, I remember I had just got uh, the new truck, the little nineteen eighty five. Uh, um, little Chevy truck that we bought. Mm-hmm. It's brand new. I hooked, and I had the I had the uh, compressor on there, and I'm thinking, oh, man, you know. They're heavy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I I had to go up a driveway, and then I, I couldn't turn around up there. I had to back the compressor down. Oh, yeah. I, it was my last one of the day, and I thought, man, I've, I've done well today. I've really, really made, paid the bills today, you know. And I thought, mm-hmm. Good. I got the, on the way down, the trailer jackknife went over the bank, twisted the bumper right off the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new truck. Uh, anyway. Oh, no. It's business, eh? That's wow. the way it goes. Yep. That's yep. the way it goes. As soon as you start making some progress, <laughs> yeah. it all goes down the toilet. I can tell you another story about that, but we've got to talk to Sheila first because she's <laughs> taking the time to phone in, talk to us. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning. Good morning. I'm phoning regarding a pair of honeysuckles we have in our front. They're growing up a trellis mm-hmm. and onto an overhead trellis. I've sort of been cutting them back a little bit, but after 13 years, they've become quite a tangled mess, and we're wondering about cutting them right down to mm-hmm. about a meter above the ground. Can we do that? You you, you can, uh, but you're better to do that in the spring rather than now, okay. because they can die back after the cutting, and over you've got the whole winter ahead of you of potential disease issues. Uh, so I'd be inclined, you can always tidy it up a bit just so it looks neat and tidy for the winter, but in the spring, then definitely you can cut it back hard and it will come back. It's going to grow uh, quite aggressively and it will, you'll, you'll want to do a little bit of training to make sure it goes onto your, onto your, uh, whatever it's trellis tra- or trellis, supporting. Right? Yeah. You're supporting uh structure and get it attached on there, put it right where you want it and, uh, yeah, do some training. 
And, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't going to uh, kill it after all these years. So no, I had an experience. Yeah. I had one experience, Sheila, where um, Drew Langton, a good friend of ours, she, she just actually passed away. Drew did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, she lived right across the street from us, and she called me over. She said, I'm having my house painted. What do I do with my honeysuckle? It's all up in here. I said, well, I'll tell you, Drew, um, it's a big monster, and it was old, and it was, you know. I said, uh, you could carefully take it, pull it back from the thing, uh, the, the wall, paint the wall, and then bring it back all up. But I said, maybe the easiest thing is just to cut it down, and if it doesn't grow, just plant a new one, you know, because I mean, it was really getting long in the tooth old. Mm-hmm. That thing re- rejuvenated and came back as a nice young yeah. mm-hmm. plant. So I, I, I think you're good to go, like Ken said. Mm-hmm. In the spring. Yeah, okay. in the spring, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd read an article where it said I should do it in the winter, and that didn't sound right to me. Well, end of winter, right? Yeah. So, yeah, after the brunt of the okay. season is over. So anytime in March, you'd be fine. Okay. Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sheila. We appreciate the call. Yeah, Thank thanks you. For Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. And we have Dennis joining us. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning. Good morning, Ken and Don. How are you doing? Excellent. Thank Good. you. Thanks. Oh, great, great. Listen, um couple of questions, quick ones. Uh, what's a what's a physical uh, uh, difference in appearance between a mole and a pocket gopher? Moles are meat eaters, and they have a long, skinny snout, and they have no hair on their face. Big claws, huge claws, huge front, huge front claws. Yeah, and oh. you don't. That's why they don't yeah. exist in they the Okanagan. They don't exist in the Okanagan. Yeah. They're not oh. an Okanagan animal. Oh, um, I thought I had some a few years back, but they must have been pocket gophers. Yeah, pocket gophers have the teeth that are like a beaver's teeth. They have to be constantly chewing to keep them going, right? To keep oh, them yeah. wearing out. And so they just grow, grow, grow all the time. So, so like body length and... and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, they're about, uh, about eight to 10 inches long uh, and sometimes you get a big fat one and they're they're pretty good size they're not as big as a regular gopher oh yeah like the regular gophers are much bigger and the, the regular gopher leaves its hole open and the uh, the uh, pocket gophers like to keep their holes buried in under a mound oh i see okay yeah all right my next question is uh what on earth can a person do with a uh, morning glory Ah, well, that's a challenge. Where is it located? Is it in a lawn or is it in a bed? Oh, it's all over the front. It's, 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 it's in the lawn, which I'm not yeah. worried about, but it's in, in the flower beds is where we're... we're that's a, it's know, a very a difficult nuisance. one to look after, okay? Mm-hmm. What's, what's that? Uh, it's a very difficult one to control uh, because it's so deep-rooted. And um, Keith Hewitt, a, a friend of both... Ken and I uh, said to me one time, he's got his under control simply by never, ever letting it leaf out. As soon as he sees the thing start to poke through the ground, he cuts that off and keeps cutting it off and never lets it leaf out. So it, in essence, starves to death because Mm -hmm. it can't create food for itself. And then those roots that are down below start coming up to the surface. And uh, then you you have a, 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 a plant that will eventually, but you really have to be vigilant with it, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what yeah. I figured. You have yeah. to be out there like almost yeah. every day, at least every second day. And mm-hmm. Now, Roundup just... is effective on it. Roundup is effective on it, but you have to... the Only best when time, it blooms. Yeah, yeah when you're in bloom, in August, that's the best time to get it. And it's kind of a catch-22. Um, if you've only got a little smidgen of, of, of uh, bindweed coming through the ground and you hit it with Roundup, it, it's not enough to really um, make it make it totally die because you haven't hit much of the, the surface. So you have, to, you have to let it grow a little bit and bloom, as Ken said, before you mm-hmm. hit it with Roundup, and a little bit of safer soap with the Roundup just to get a spreader sticker to get it on there. It's, it's a tough one. It's a tough yeah, one. Yeah, no kidding. Yep. Yeah, like the Roundup will kill all the flowers and everything. Well, exactly. You, you can't, well, well, it won't kill them if you don't touch them. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. what I did over the years was I'd put some, bamboo stakes in there and let the bindweed, uh, which is another word for morning glory, climb up the, the stake, right? Yeah. And then you take a sponge with the Roundup in it and just two sponges and just sponge it, right? And oh, you're not yeah. touching your plants, but you're, you're, you're getting the Roundup on the, on the um, yeah. Yeah, so, on the, yeah. yeah. It's, it's covering the bamboo. That's a great idea. Yeah. But you have to wait for it to bloom because yeah. that's the only time it has literally no effect on it. 
at other times. So, yeah. uh, okay, the, and that would be any time in August, roughly, eh? In uh, August, yep. yep. When you see the flowers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Hey, you're yeah. welcome. Thanks Good for luck. the call. Okay. Yeah. Have a great you day. Betcha. All right. Brenda, are we going to take a break? Yeah, we're going to take a short break. We've got mm-hmm. uh, online there. We've got uh, uh, Vic online, so we're going to uh, but we're going to just ha- have him hang on, and we'll be back with more AM eleven fifty Garden. <laughs> Render, you're awfully proud of me because I remembered that that is the legal, and uh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, Vic, good morning. You've joined us, and thank thanks for calling. Welcome to the show. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I have a couple of minor questions here. Mm-hmm. How short should I cut my lawn this fall, and what uh, when should I be putting the fertilizer on? Uh, you can do the fertilizer now. Anytime you're in October, you go ahead and put some down and. Uh, the lawn certainly responds to that. And cutting it down, the, what we want to avoid is just like snow mold and rotting over the winter time. So at some point uh, in October, you can just give it that final mow. I tend to cut it a little bit shorter in the fall. So, But that a little bit is just relative. It's generally around that inch and a half to two inches, the last cut of the season. Now, you have to keep an eye on it because it wasn't that long ago. Was it three or four years ago? We did our final cut in November, about the 8th of November. <laughs> so it was like we, could, we had to. It just kept growing and growing and growing. So I guess it, the bottom line is Ken is saying don't let it go into winter too long. Yeah. Okay. Too short is not as bad as too long. Too short, okay. the grass is very hardy. I mean, it's hardy stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I it survives wanna, on the prairies. Uh, you know. I, I find it works better if I look after it properly. Yes. Um, one true. other question. <laughs> Fertilizing my strawberries. I use 824-24. And is this too early, or should I be waiting a little while on that, too? Uh, it's not uh, not too early. I would just say you could go ahead and give it a, a light application. Lighter applications in the fall are often recommended, so you don't have to okay. go too heavy on it. No, well, because we have we have a lot of uh, phosphorus in our soils naturally, and and so the the middle number is phosphorus, and it's mm-hmm. sort of less. It's potassium less, as well. Got, yeah, yeah p- potassium we have a fair bit too. So yeah, I just go light on it. That's all. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank, okay. thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, we probably have time for a quickie right now, 250-862-2525, before our big break. But we'll be back after that with a whole hour of Rip Roaring Garden Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken, uh, the um, fall pruning, uh, a lot of people are out there doing their cleanups and prunings mm-hmm. and things. What do you think is a rule of thumb as how far back you can prune in the fall and what you can prune back far and what things you should just leave without uh, yeah. without pruning too much. You know, I'm I'm just a big believer in leaving stuff alone uh, like cuz I don't really do a lot of pruning to begin with. Is I plant a plant and it's I know what it's going to grow and what it's going to do. So I just leave it and let it do its thing. And in the fall, it knows what it's doing going into winter yeah. and it's prepping for winter itself. Yeah. I don't have to go in if I go and disrupt that by changing it. Yeah. You know, a little bit of snipping yeah, here and there. Tidying up and things. Is, is tidying different. up is fine, but, you know, I just don't go too crazy. And I like to leave the grasses, the feather reed grasses and things to... to, to oh, for a while, yeah. like dried arrangements. Yep. Uh, Brenda, you've joined us. Thank you for the call. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, last week I caught the end of a, a topic you were talking about fall mums and mentioned something about them needing a certain amount of darkness before they would bloom. Mm-hmm. Did, did I hear that correctly? Yes. But yeah. uh, the fall, the ones that are bred for fall, bred for cushion mums and the and the garden mums as they call them, those are are fine. They don't need shortening. But when you buy, when you plant out a potted mum that you might buy in the store as a gift or something, or get uh-huh. receive as a gift, those potted mums uh, will often grow fine through the summer and through. But they don't bud out until darn it, they're they're well into October when they start budding out, and by the time they want to bloom, it's frozen. So exactly, yeah. I've got mm-hmm. a herd of ones that have been here for years. Um, I don't; they weren't ones that I potted out. I don't remember mm-hmm. how they got here, but mm-hmm. 
Um, can I fertilize them and make them start now? Because they're mm-hmm. all ready to bloom. But like you said, by the time they normally do, then they get frozen no. so fast. Well, the time to, to, to shorten their day would be a little earlier than this. Say in late August, you want to start shortening their day. Okay. And what, what does that mean? Well, lengthen the night. Is well. Yeah, the short, or lengthen the night. Lengthen you know, the shorten night. Shorten the day, lengthen the night. So the key with that is shutting off your outside lights at night mm-hmm. because anytime you leave lights on around them, it keeps fooling them and they think it's summertime still. So oh. you have to shut your lights off at night. Okay. And street lights and, yeah. can be all very difficult. <laughs> if you've got a street light going on or whatever, that kind of thing, lengthening the day or shortening or uh, shortening no, other way uh, lengthening the night, <laughs> shortening yeah. the day. Um, yeah. Okay, well. If you got that going on, then you have to literally uh, get some black poly and put a little black. framework around them and just every night at 530 put the put the curtain down. Oh, okay. I know. it's it's. Well, we did that in the greenhouse for years to, to bring our mums on and our poinsettias and that. We had to shorten their days. And we had to use curtains because um, the, the street lights. Well, mine are all in the backyard with no street no lights, lights yeah. and there's... Chances you know, are, have, do they do this every year? of them, so, do they, but anyway... Yeah, do they do I this every year, Brenda? Them. Is that the point? Uh, they don't really need much right okay. now because if you if you start pushing new growth on them now, it's going to deter yeah. the growth. Yeah. It's going to okay. slow. Okay, thank you. Growth. Now, Brenda, Brenda, yes. it, it, is this happening every year to you with those months? Yes, yeah. So they, they I come think out, they were. Yeah, well, I think, ready to bloom, yeah. and yet by the time they come out, they last. They last forever. They last right into November until yeah. it snows. I mean, yeah. I've got pictures of yeah. them in the snow. Yeah. November twenty third one year. Yeah, you want to you want to maybe exchange them. I, I just buy some mums that are meant for the garden. These were probably potted mum gifts that you got. How tall are they? Um, foot and a half, two foot and a half. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. one other question. Yep. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. I want to move a huge knotweed, and it's not the bad kind; it's the pretty kind. And can I move it in the fall, or do I have to wait till spring? Just the per per polymorphia persicaria, whatever oh, yeah. the word is. Yep, I know the one. That's a that is a amazing it's blooming shadow, plant. and beautiful. I'm not sure mm-hmm. why we don't have more of them around town. They're so pretty. Yeah, they they get quite big quite quite quickly, and they're they're a nice plant. Uh, really, I, they're they they're not nice uh, with the fragrance, but other than that, they're gorgeous. I would just uh, do it in the spring because you're going to always have success moving them in the spring. All right. Well, I appreciate your help. Thank you very much. All right. Thank we you appreciate for your call, Brenda. Thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. Okay. Yep. Thank bye you. Bye. We are uh, just about there where we've got to uh, do uh, a break, and we've got a whole hour of Garden Show coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always good to be here every Saturday morning. Ken and I have been doing this for a long, long time. The show started in 1983. Uh, that's mm. the olden days. Uh, that, that's the very olden days to my uh, to my uh, do- granddaughter, Ellie. Mm-hmm. She always says to her mom, oh, that's so 80s, mom. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Lindsay kind of went, well, I grew up in the 90s, uh, really. You know, she was born mm-hmm. in 85. So I think Ellie should switch that. To, oh, that's so 90s, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and well, we and and when I grew yeah. up, it was like, oh, Dad, you're not in the depression anymore. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just oh, it's all relative, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, we've right at the end of our rope here for the first half of the show. We're going to have another hour of garden show. So get your questions ready because we're here to answer them. And uh, phone in to two five zero eight six two two five two five, and we'll be back with more AM eleven fifty Garden Show. <laughs> Uh, I was asked to go uh, and sit on one of those things over a, a barrel of cold water, and it was cold. I didn't know how cold it was until it, I hit it. I just about had a heart attack. It was out at the uh, Mission Hall, and they were having some event. I forget, a service club of some sort. And I was the uh, the uh, guest guest uh, droppee, right? Right. And, of course, I'm sitting there, and they're throwing this damn ball at the at the target. And, being, and, I'm, just, ah, and I'm taunting them. Yeah, try and hit the target. Blah, blah. And all of a sudden... Of course, the target gets hit. I get dumped into the water. And I'm telling you, Steve, it was so cold, 
I was blue when I came out of that water. Uh, Don, if I remember correctly, I actually was the one behind the paddle. No one actually threw the ball. I actually hit the trigger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to oh say, everyone's worried about COVID and everything yep. that's going on in the election. Mm-hmm. Get out in the vi- vin- vineyards. Get yeah. out in the wineries. You don't necessarily have to go and, and drink wine, but just go and take yeah. pictures and walk amongst the vineyards and talk to the, yeah. the wine pourers or the winemakers that are there. It's a great, busy, yeah. exciting time for harvest and pick and crush right now, mm-hmm. and it's right outside our back door. And the aroma is amazing. It truly, truly is. Yeah. And, and, and I've got to tell you, some of the guests who don't know, if you go to the vineyards and you hear large bangs and pops, no, there's not a farmer shooting at you. No. It's a bird, <laughs> it's a, bird gun, yeah. Yeah, the bird guns. They're getting smarter each year, they're, yeah. by the way. They have to use flashers and now little lasers. So <laughs> yeah. those crows and blackbirds yeah. and... Uh, Starlings, yeah. I guess, are getting smarter every year. Anyway, Steve, sure. always appreciate your call. Great show, guys. Take Thank care. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling. Oh, yeah, just a reminder there to, to that we do have, and we do have, some of the best wines in the world growing right here in the Okanagan. So when you go out to, to purchase a bottle of wine, next time just make sure you're headed to the BC section and yeah. pick out something nice because there's so much, you so betcha. much wonderful wine there. And let's support our local uh, uh, vintners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Ah, oh, we got Phil on line three. Good morning. Thanks for waiting, Phil. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. We, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Yep. A uh, couple questions about to hot peppers. I had hot peppers all summer. Everything is good. I have my cayenne drying, and I got Tabernero, and a few of them are inside now, and they look wonderful before I cut them and, and dry them for the winter. But I had uh, two uh, Carolina Reapers, mm-hmm. and they were all planted at the same time, and they weren't started from seed. They bought them at the, a nursery, and, mm-hmm. and away we went. And they are, I'm well, looking at two of them right now, and they're about a foot and a half tall. Mm-hmm. They came to the flower stage, like the little flowers they get, and then sometimes the flowers fell off, and then they kind of uh, went right down into the, the first stage, I guess, of, mm-hmm. of, of forming some sort of a pepper, and then they fell off. But the plant is healthy as they're both healthy as all get out, but here it is now, yeah. and I've reaped nothing, but I just mm. wonder what to do with them for the winters. And, uh, you know, is, uh, one, why didn't they uh, mm. get any um, peppers? And two, uh, is there any way of keeping them over winter or start again next year? Uh, yeah, a couple of questions there. Uh, well, for one thing, reapers are the latest pepper you can buy. Okay. Um, I've grown them, <laughs> and uh, they take a long time to come to fruition. The fact that you actually had some bloom and the bloom and the and they've dropped could be a lack of certain trace elements like boron or something like that. Could be uh, that they uh, formed a small fruit and they got <coughs> excuse me a, a, a lack of calcium kind of thing blossom in type of thing. There's a number of things, but they're they are one like Donnie Stoltz, or my brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. He grows peppers, hot peppers. He's a pro, and um, he he so starts his from seed. And he he has to start his reapers uh, in February at, or he no even said later. January and he even sa- yeah he yeah. even said January he said if you can get them going around the sixteenth or twentieth of January yeah. that gives you your best start and having some potential grow light available yeah. for them indoors before they go out because they're just they're, the latest oh, of the late and <laughs> and and the thing is uh, um, Dennis uh, that um, or Phil I should say. Um, Phil, the uh, the Carolina Reapers, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know what your growing situation is there. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Donnie grows his in five-gallon containers with night, number one sunshine mix or something like that mm-hmm. and has tremendous success with them in those uh, five-gallon containers. Um, okay. Okay. Um, all good information. What I have them in is I have them in, uh, I think, the three-gallon containers, so they mm-hmm. got a good root system mm-hmm. and everything, right? to grow mm-hmm. um but when you're saying like start them in february from seed well when i got them it's like um when i got them at the i think it was the greenery mm-hmm. yep. but when i got them like they're already like probably about four or five or six inches tall with leaves on mm-hmm. them so i've already done that pre-winter thing what time did what time of year stage. did you plant them um i guess it was probably recollection here 
April. Uh, no, I was definitely the first of May. First of May. Yeah. yeah, it's probably a bit early. Uh, what you're going to find with with all those peppers, it's all about the heat. And as you know, we didn't have any heat this year until about yeah. middle of July. That so that's right a there. that's a delayed effect. And those particular ones, they need that warm, sunny weather, and they need it right from day one. So uh, planting out probably first of June is fine because you're getting into the warmer weather. This year, 1st of June was cold and rainy and, and not good. Awesome. So it just delays and delays and delays. And lots of our tomato plants, you know, some of my tomatoes are just coming into full fruition right now. They're about a month late. The peppers, I've got several runs of peppers. and A lot of them are pretty good. You know, they came on at the right time. But any of those fancy ones that are long season, they're still just getting going. And it's uh, and we've already gone through, like, we're not getting long enough days now. And it's too cold at night. And it's just this, you know. I think you nailed it. Yeah. I think that's yeah. exactly yeah. probably what it is because they are kind of fickle when it yeah. comes to they need the hot weather. Yeah. Yeah. And just to, just to go let somebody else on the line here. Is what should I do with them now besides look at them and see how pretty right. they are, but don't yeah. get up close because there's nothing on it. <laughs> if you've got room in the house, mm-hmm. uh, you might be able to, Phil, you might be able to, if you've got room on a nice sunny spot and you've got some extra light, like a grow lamp, you might be able to get them coming. But the problem you're going to raise, uh, at least I found when you bring peppers in, they are so prone to aphids. They've just become aphid prone. I, I had some in the greenhouse thinking I'm going to have winter peppers and I couldn't keep the aphids off them. So yeah. I think you got to look at it as an experience, and next year is a new year. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'll hey, follow the report. Come next fall. Thanks, awesome. Phil. Take okay. care. Okay. Yep, you Thanks bet. for Bye. calling. Yep. Take, Take care. care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah. Right. Now, Grinder, what are we at? Are we going to go to Dennis, or are we going to take a Player's break? choice. Sorry? It's a player's choice. You player's pick. choice. Well, I'm going to take Dennis. Hey, Dennis, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you two today? Excellent. Good, thanks. Um, I'm just coming at to the end of the second season with my um, June-bearing strawberries, and believe it or not, we're still picking them. <laughs> we, we, picked, we picked about half a dozen or so yesterday and just ate them in the yard, and some of them are quite big and juicy. They're really nice. I can't believe I'm still getting them in, in October. Mm. But the, the why I called up, did you mention just before the news before to feed your strawberries now? Well, there are a lot of times uh, that that there's a fertilizer application that's put on a fall fertilization on perennial plants. So that can be berries, it can be, you know, raspberries, can be the strawberries, it can be your lawns. Lots of plants that that are sort of semi evergreen or they're perennial. They're coming back next year. Uh, there's there's this treatment that's sometimes done in the fall, which is just a light application of fertilizing right now, and the plants will actually absorb a lot of that, and they will actually hold it in their cells uh, ready right through the winter time, and it actually adds a little bit of uh, cold resistance, and then in it's stored. It, they have these nutrients stored in their roots, so in the springtime they'll be able to reutilize those stored nutrients and get off to an early start. So that's so I, uh, I've got I've got something called fruit and berry food that would be suitable. Yeah, I'm sure that would be just it's fine. Granular, obviously. Yeah, yep, you just go do a light application. And okay. this is it's generally done in October, somewhere the early October, depending on the season. This year, man, we're getting the beautiful weather now, but I'd say any time now is fine. Yeah. Okay, and I'll just add another question. What the heck was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I've got lots of grass. Go- I- I've had the worst year in all the years I've lived in Kelowna with grass in my vegetable garden and my mm. around my fruit trees and what have you. And I finally finished cleaning the, the, the garden up la- yesterday, actually. But I've got lots of grass growing in these strawberries. Is it worthwhile cleaning that all up now, or should I just leave that till the spring? Well, it's worthwhile. If you can do mm. some cleaning and weeding, absolutely, Dennis. Yeah. Clean, yeah. Cleaning up that is great. Uh, when we talked about not doing too much in the fall as far as pruning goes, meaning on shrubs and things like that, you don't want to cut them back too far. Yeah. Oh, I say my vegetable garden this year, I've never had so much grass in my vegetables in all the years I've been here. It's been weird. Mm. Plus my June burning, I didn't get as good a crop as I should have done because they were so da- A lot of the time I go in to pick them and they're rotten, they're so wet. Ooh. So I've, I've had a lousy season from that Ooh. point of view. Well, but, uh, take a picture of that, of that grass that you've got that's spreading in up close and uh, get it to either myself or Don just to identify it because okay. there are a couple weedy grasses that do get into plant beds. And mm-hmm. uh, they they're fairly easy to identify, um, but there there's sort of a particular uh, urgency in some of them. 
<laughs> so if you want to get us a picture of that uh, that that weedy grass that's getting in everywhere, and let, let's have a look at it. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. All right, thanks, Enjoy Dennis. Again, guys, nice always to nice to hear from you, Dennis. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 And we're going to take a break now. Two five zero eight six two two five two five to get through to us. We'll be back with more AM eleven fifty. We are back, and it is a glorious day today. It's beautiful and sunny, and it's just lovely out there. Lovely fall day. I'm starting to see those maples color up there. I, I noticed the uh, red maples are starting to change, and it's interesting the way they change color. And that you, you can sometimes identify issues with trees, where you get part of the tree turning red and the other part of it not turning yet it's just growing normally and and you know why is there a difference between those two parts of the plant it's one thing if it's the top or the bottom but when it's like a single branch or something it's kind of telling you something's going something's on going on not always fatal but it no. is something going on in there mm-hmm. i've got a report actually i'm doing for some folks uh, on that exact issue mm-hmm. ken we've got some uh, more call or, well we've got another caller and it's bill good morning bill welcome to the show Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, two questions. One, how long can I leave my potatoes in the ground? Well, you don't want to leave them any longer than you have to, only because um, they're, they're prone to being consumed by underground uh, creatures. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm kinda, I am kind of like the idea of getting them out and getting them in, okay, getting so, them cleaned. Yeah, and I'd dig them up any, any day then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then actually, that which actually brings me to another question as well. Um, what's the best way for storing them after I dig them up? Well, well, it depends yeah. on on what you've got as a storage unit. I mean, the ideal thing, of course, is a root cellar, but we we don't often have root cellars anymore. Um, the uh, a cool, uh, dark, and uh, air movement is really what you need. Okay, mm-hmm. so my basement cool, dark, and air movement, and uh, you know, a person should if they're uh, you know wanting to do more storage and that sort of thing create that space in their yard if they're a real avid gardener to have that space uh, there's lots of ways to skin the cat i know when we moved into our first place on on our second home on uh, glenwood 8876 glenwood across the street from our operation underneath the back deck the homeowner uh, was a gentleman that we knew quite well um had built an insulated room and he had a he had a uh, a little heater in there just in case it got real cold but it i mean it was um it was it was a great little place uh the problem was we needed a spot to put our vacuum cleaner you know our (laughs) in-house vacuum cleaner so we put that in there and of course it got so dusty and dirty in there that the the oh done yeah you know you just ruined it i i actually do have plans when i build my deck i am going to make an insulated i think space underneath my deck when i get that done next year stellar idea yeah, mm-hmm. and then uh, so then the other question, Don, is um, I did the budding on my peach tree. Uh, well, let me see. I'm going to say two, two and a half weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And when should I take the wrap off of the bud? I would uh, probably another week or so. Uh, you want to have an inspection, see what it's doing. Yeah, so you could take you could take the up. wrap off with no harm. This is the this is the cellular wrap, right? Yeah, yeah. You can take that off and see if it's callousing and looking like it's taken. Leave it off if, you know, but mm-hmm. actually, if it hasn't callous by now, you it's didn't get take. a good graft. Yeah. So you're going to see it. And uh, what it'll tell you, um, Bill, is that you got to do it again if, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I know. I, I, mean, I have not had a lot of success yeah. at this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know I, I, actually, I, I'm confident about on one or two of the buds I did yeah. this year. And, mm. But, yeah, I haven't, uh, over the last few years, I think I've only had one actually take. Yeah. But, you know, it takes practice, and when you're only doing six a year, sort of six yep. or seven a year. and yeah. Well, I but, I had a, an amazing thing. I I uh, but I grafted bud grafted right into the trunk of my tree. The tree was about three inches in diameter at the time, and I actually got a, a, a I actually got a a uh, nectarine growing out of it. Ooh. But now the whole thing's gone because it's it's firewood yeah. now. Yeah, because you took the tree out. Uh, yeah. You betcha. Yep. Yeah. No, that's a, that's I like that idea mm-hmm. because like Sammy, because I've got the I've got a, a new veteran. It's about two, I guess, two years old, and I've got the mm-hmm. other one that you know, and it's you know. 
I, I just because I wanted to relocate it, and I figured it's easier to plant a new one than relocate the old one. Mm-hmm. And so that's because uh, the old one, I mean, I'm still getting like 120 pounds. I got, I got well over 100 pounds off that peach tree every year. Oh, man. Good nice. for you. Good for you. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, okay. thank you thank very you, much, and have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks okay. for calling, Bye-bye. Bill. Take you care. Bet. Bye-bye. Yeah, okay, there now we go. got to get back on track and take a short break. We've got Dan Bruce on the on hold here. He's yep. in He's in the bullpen. Uh, waiting to get in and uh, we would love to talk to Dan when we come back with more AM 1150 Garden Show. You betcha. And we have joining us uh, Dan Bruce, who's one of our favorite friends and uh, horticulturist extraordinaire and uh, all sorts of other things too. A real uh, uh, guy to know. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Ken. Good morning, Don. Dan. And good morning, Day. <laughs> good, <laughs> good morning. Now, so, Dan, this is, uh, this is the time of year I was just uh, talking about how the, the, the smells and senses and everything uh, at this time of year are so different than they are in spring, and yet we got the same daytime temperatures and nighttime temperatures uh, mm-hmm. pretty much. But it's a different, different feel, different smell uh, out there. And uh, how do you feel about that? Well, I just came down from the compost pile, so I get what you mean about smell. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it, you know, one <clears throat> amazing thing. I mean, you can look at all these trees and shrubs mm-hmm. and bushes and plants and so forth, and um, what is um, a surprising thing is that inside some of these are little treasures. And by inside, I mean I've been pruning lately. Mm-hmm. And you cut branches and you look at the cut surface and there's this quite often a fascinating pattern in that wood. Mm-hmm. So what I've been doing <clears throat> over the past couple of three years is saving some of these and giving them to a friend of mine who has a booth at the farmer's market, mm-hmm. and he makes wooden jewelry. Oh, oh nice. really? Um, pendants, earrings, necklaces, um, you name it, out of cut sections of wood. Wow. And the neat thing about this is all the, all the um, pieces that he makes are... And by the way, these are not, uh, you know, hokey cavemen type things. These are done on proper Mm -hmm. um, silver mounts and uh, Mm -hmm. done professionally. Mm -hmm. All of these um, pieces are correctly identified by name. Ah, very cool. Dan, would you like to get your friend to contact me? Because I would like to get him, uh, I've got small pieces of lignum vita. Well... Um, that is a hard nut to crack, but I will certainly get him in touch <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah. It saws really easy. It's like it, it's oily, and I can put it through the bandsaw with no problem. Um, interestingly enough, because it's very heavy wood, it's uh, mm-hmm. there are a number of sculptures in Lignum Vitae mm-hmm. that are now in the British Museum in London. Mm-hmm. They were found in Jamaica in 1799 in Ooh. a cave. Wow. And they were carved before Columbus sailed. Wow. Mm. wow. Lignum vitae is a very hard, tough, non-destructible wood. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got, a, ch- I've got yeah. a big chunk of it. I can't let that go, but I, because I've been making certain things uh, uh, and whatnot, I've got small pieces, and they'd be ideal for jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is that the wood they used to use for bearings? Yes, bearings yes. in ships. Yep. Yep. Wow. It's amazing. It's amazing wood. Um, and they call it ironwood? Is that what it is? Mm. Or is that different? Well, they, uh, well, they there's call a whole bunch yeah. of things called ironwood. Yeah, that's right. But uh, lignum vitae is uh, native to the Caribbean and um, the coast of Yucatan. Um, anybody who's been to Cancun will have seen lignum vitae growing around there. Mm. Amazing, um, amazing wood. It's got yes. such a beautiful, beautiful pattern to the grain when you when you pop.
polish it up really shiny. Yeah. The the pattern is just incredible. It's almost like a, it's, it is almost like a, 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 a gemstone. You know? But um, the one thing that it's no good for at all is making rafts. Because it sinks in water. <laughs> it doesn't float. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you can't be making a raft out of it. No, no. no. It makes good submarines, though. Yeah. Or anchor. Good yep. anchor. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Dan, it's great. Now, I guess uh, Fintry is kind of uh, starting to, to uh, winterize. Well, we are open for tours this afternoon, mm-hmm. and we will be open for tours tomorrow afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we will start to... Um, Think about winterizing it. Um, it our last weekend will be the tenth um, and eleventh. So the next weekend. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, there, there you go. go. Well, that's good information. And uh, and your garden is uh, going to be sort of put to bed pretty, fairly quickly too. Well, it's pretty crisp at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, been a dry end of the year. That's yeah. for sure. Um, some things have mm-hmm. survived, some things have not. Yeah, well, um, bulbs and things like that are probably okay. They're deep down and under and waiting for spring to come. And we get lots of snow, maybe, when that'll be good. Well, snow is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, snow is <clears throat> a blessing on the ski hills, but... Um, Long may it stay there. <laughs> oh, I, I tend to there agree. Go. The only thing is we can always use the moisture. Uh, the moisture well, coming down, yeah. yes, but if it's on the ski hills, then the moisture comes down eventually. Well, that's true. That is true. Yeah. yeah you betcha. Perfect. Dan, it's always great to talk to you. Do you have any closing remarks? Um, I still have two Anna's hummingbirds flitting around the garden. Oh, nice. Hmm. And um, they're at the feeder this morning. Well, on that bird ornithology subject, um, I was out in my backyard sanding away, doing some woodworking, and uh, I just at this time of year, it just seems the geese are so active, and they're all flying over in their V's, their goosey V's, and I'm just wondering, do they actually fly south anymore, or do they hang around? Some fly south, some hang around. Yeah. Um. The, um, but in the old days, they would all fly south, right? Well, the Canada goose is a <clears throat> interesting bird because it has its change from time to time. Mm-hmm. And um, Canada geese are now um, common in Scandinavia and in England and Northern Europe. Hmm. And they learned the languages um, there. Yes, they speak <laughs> some German. They honk in German. Geese. <laughs> um, I'm not going to, I can, <clears throat> I can honk to them, but I'm not going to honk in German over the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was King Charles II that first brought, or had Canada geese brought to England as, as captive birds for St. James's Park. And they stayed there for years and years and years. They're still there. Not the same ones. No, no, of course no. not. Of course but not. Um, since then, of course, the Canada goose has made it to Europe on its own. Um, birds have flown across. Right. And the Canada goose and its expansions must surely be the answer to the um, somewhat mysterious Hawaiian goose, which has been in Hawaii so long that it's quite changed and its feet are not really very webbed anymore because it doesn't need to swim. There you go. Um, but that is probably um, how it got there is um, some Canada geese um, managed to fly that wow. far or got blown that far well, or ended up there somehow. This is so fascinating. The problem is we're running out of time. And we'll, well, let's <clears throat> carry on with the Canada goose story next week, uh, Dan, because uh, that is very fascinating. And I'm, I'm really fascinated now about the fact that the Hawaiian goose uh, is losing its webbed feet. Uh, Darwin would be quite pleased. Anyway, <laughs> I got I to, gotta, we got to go because we we've run out of time. But thanks, buddy, for phoning in. We always appreciate your call. 
we will talk again. You betcha. Thanks, Dan. Take care. Okay. Yep. Take care. Bye for now. Bye bye. Right. And on that yeah. note, um, mm. we're gonna just we're, well, we're getting pretty close to the uh, to the tips and plans of the week. I and, believe uh, we all are. That stuff. Uh, just a couple of things here that I want to. Well, do I have any reminders? Not really. I don't have that many reminders. Not a lot of reminders I, out there. No, I uh, must say we had a good session last week on our Zoom oh, yeah. composting yeah. class. Yeah, that was, it was quite fun, and mm-hmm. uh, we're looking forward to doing a lot more of those uh, off and on. We're trying to do some uh, classes online about every second week or so. But once we get into January, we're going to have a whole raft of them, a whole bunch of different classes coming down. And, uh, yeah, so for landscapers and people who are gardeners and all kinds. So, yeah, it should be fun. Exciting. Uh, Ken and I am going to join in at some point and, and, and have a have a, a listen to. Uh, look at, um, just I'm going to put a bug in your ear. 2022, if all this COVID thing and everything settles down, we have plans to go to the Chelsea Flower Show again in 2022. Mm. Uh, I don't even think it's going to show this year, but I think by the time 2022 comes, I think we're going to do it. So keep the tips and plants of the week. My tip of the week is a good idea to clean all your used containers with a 10% bleach solution before storing them away for winter. And my plant of the week is the uh, the uh, living stones, the lithops, and mine is in bloom in the greenhouse, and it keeps coming on. I'm quite excited. We're going to have a mm-hmm. nice... It's, there's a lot of them out there, so I'm going to try and get them all. And I have to have every one of them. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's great. What a cool plant. Mm-hmm. All right. I uh, also have a tip and a plant. My tip of the week is that it's time to let your house plants start drying out more between waterings. And now that the seasons are changing, the days are getting shorter, plants are slowing down. They don't need quite as much water, but they, knew, they do need to get a little closer to the windows. So just move them on over and enjoy those plants through the winter. My plant of the week is the red maple, the Acer rubrum, and they're just starting to turn beautiful red colors in the fall. Remember, they're green all year long and turn brilliant red in the fall and one of the nicest fall colors of any tree. So the red maple is the Acer rubrum. That's my tips and plants for this week. Remember to check growercoach.com. As usual, stellar tips and plants, and hopefully you've learned something today, folks. We sure have. And uh, my Shigo quote of the week is, if the specs are wrong for doing the job, then get them changed. Mm. We'll see you next week with more AM 1150 Garden Show.